Well, good evening. This is our Sunday evening Bible study. We are going to release this early. So if you're seeing it early, good for you. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to be in Genesis chapter number two. And um, I was preparing this as getting ready at the men's rally over at Trinity. I thought this would be a blessing to you. We're going to look at Adam in his garden. Uh, and talk about you and I and three different elements of that garden in Genesis chapter number two. And I hope it'd be a blessing to you. Let's pray and we'll jump into this. Lord, we thank you for your word. And we thank you for the book of beginnings, Genesis. And Lord, without uh, the book of beginnings, we wouldn't know how we started and we wouldn't know how we are to end up. Lord, thank you for Genesis 2, uh, the testimony of the Garden of Eden and what it means for us today. Lord, help us as we look in here, help us to be a blessing to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Genesis chapter number two, it says in verse number four, these are the generations of the heaven and the earth, and they were created in the day the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, and the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Notice that, no man to till the ground. Even though it was newly created, it wasn't self-tilling soil. Uh, so it still needed a man to work. Remember, the curse is not that you would work, but the curse is that you would work by the sweat of your brow uh, and the thorns and the thistles that would come up out of the ground. So it still needed to be tilled. But there went out a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Number one thing I want you to notice about the garden is that God put Adam in a garden that he was to tame. This was a very large piece of real estate. We're going to see in that garden, uh, there's a river that comes in that breaks off into four heads. And essentially, there's four rivers in there. And we imagine there's some sort of God-made mountains, not kind of the, the, the wasted space that we have today. Uh, but there's probably uh, a variety of different landscape. And also, there's creatures uh, of everything that God had made, far more creatures than are around today. Uh, they are going to be in this garden as well. And then also every tree that God had made as well. And so there's a great variety of flora and fauna here in the Garden of Eden. And Adam is to go in there and he is to take care, he's to tame his garden. Verse number eight, the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden and there put man whom he had formed. God formed man for a specific garden. Verse number nine, and out of the ground may the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, a tree of life, also in the midst of the garden, a tree of knowledge and of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became four heads. The name of the first is Pison, and it, that is it, which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, and there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is bedellum and onyx stone. And so notice another thing that's there. Uh, you have a variety of flora and fauna, uh, and then also you do have treasure. So imagine this. You're in a garden, uh, and there's throughout this garden this vast piece of real estate, not just like a a cutesy little garden we'd think of, uh, but this great forested, fielded uh, garden. There's also treasure to be found in there. Verse number 13, And the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hittichel, which is going towards the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So there's two things that Adam is to be doing inside the garden. He's to be exploring his garden. Uh, and it's not just exploration for the sake of exploration. Uh, he's exploring the garden so that he can take dominion over it. So it says in verse number one uh, that God created man in his likeness and in his image. Uh, then he said um, that he used to be fruitful and multiply, and he was to have dominion over the creatures. Uh, there's very many creatures that are way more powerful than man, 
but mankind is to figure out how he is to take dominion over these creatures. So, so Adam is an explorer, and an exploration is not unto its own ends. It's so that mankind can figure things out and learn how to subdue them. Yesterday, it was pouring down rain. My son, Timmy, said, can I go down the ravine? The ravine is a tre- treacherous uh, 80-foot trap behind my house, and um, I'm sure... Some people will look at that ravine and say, that's parental abuse to let your kids go down there. Uh, but I know there's a little bit of risk, a little bit of danger in life. And, you know, when you're a young kid, risk and danger is what's fun. If, if you recall, like you go to the park, um, the uh, kind of park is it that has the toys there? Whatever, you know, you go in the little jungle gym type thing. And the, the, the best ones are the scariest ones. You know, that you're hovering way above uh, the playground uh, as you're climbing along these toys and, and these things. And so Timmy is pouring down rain. Can I go down the ravine? Yeah, you can go down the ravine. He loves, loves, the boys love the ravine. There's snakes and there's turtles, there's trout, there's ducks, there's fox, there's all sorts of creatures down the ravine. And they want to go explore. They want to be adventurers. And this adventure is, is not a means to its own end. Uh, they're learning these things so they can learn how to subdue them and bring order out of them. Remember, God created the world out of chaos, and man was made in God's image. So one of, one of the things that men do is they go into a realm of chaos, a, a realm that they do not understand, and they learn about it, they study it, they're hands-on explorers of that subject matter, and they bring order uh, to that subject. And here Adam is given a garden. He's to explore it, then he's to keep it, and he's to dress it in verse number 15. So in verse number 16, we see another thing that Adam is to do, uh, and that is he is to fight. He's to be a warrior. There's a battle to fight. There's two different enemies that uh, are talked about here in the Garden of Eden. Verse number 16, it says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Out of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For on the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Um, so now he's got an inner battle and then also an outer battle. Remember that, that Adam was placed in the Garden of Eden. Remember when Adam and Eve were kicked out of the Garden of Eden? Uh, there is a there is at the gate a, um, a cherubim with a sword, flaming sword, and they can't go back into the Garden of Eden. Well, let me ask you a question. In this world, in Ch- Genesis chapter number 2, why does God place man in a garden with walls around it? The only reason you place walls around something is to keep other things out. Well, during this time, there is a dragon, the old serpent. Uh, The serpent was more subtle than any creature, it says in chapter number 3. So inside of Adam, there was an internal temptation to take the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then also there was going to be an external threat, an existential threat. It was going to be the dragon uh, that was going to be without. And so one of the things that Adam was to do was to become a great warrior. Uh, it tells us again and again in Scripture, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Uh, there is no um, strength in weakness. You know, Paul says, I know when I'm weak, that's when I am what? Strong. So he's actually saying, I'm strong. Uh, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be weak in yourself and strong in Christ Jesus. You and I are to be mighty warriors. I think a man physically ought to protect his house to his capacity. Uh, and so how about spiritually? We know we have a mortal enemy of the soul, that you and I are to be as strong as we possibly can spiritually uh, because we have an internal enemy within and also an external enemy without. Then number three, Adam is going to have a woman to win. So he's got a garden to keep. Remember, he's exploring and bringing into order. 
You know, he's like David Livingston ma mapping out Africa. I mean, he's going out there. He's exploring his garden. Uh, he's mapping it, keeping it, planning it uh, there. And then also he's got the battle to fight. And then importantly, most importantly, I think, because you wouldn't be here if it was out without point number three, he has a woman to win. Verse 18 it says, and the Lord God said, it is not good that a man should be alone. I will make and help meet for him. And in verse number 21, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up his flesh instead thereof. And the rib, which the Lord God had taken from the man, made he woman and brought her unto the man. So remember, Adam names everything. Um, and what did he name woman? He said, look, took one look at Eve, and he said, whoa, man. And she became woman. Out of his, notice this where, I want you to notice a few things. One is that Adam was the most vulnerable uh, when it came to point number three, and that was the woman. A deep sleep had come upon him. Nothing is more scary to a man than a woman. So a woman can hold great power over a man. You can ask a young man, young single guy, uh, say, hey, you want to work out three hours today in the gym? Yeah, sure, yeah, sure. Uh, you want to go play football for the whole afternoon? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, let's go exploring. Let's go hunting. Let's go fishing. Let's work all day. And now I ask the same man, uh, why don't you go over there and ask that pretty girl for a date? And he is petrified. He is knocking in his boots. He is scared to death. Why? Because she holds great capacity over him. Capacity for heartbreak and suffering and sorrow and rejection or great potential for uh, relationship and family and home and all these wonderful things that only a woman can bring. So he's vulnerable. He's asleep there. Uh, I'll tell you a funny joke or antidote. Uh, I go to a CrossFit gym, and at that CrossFit gym, they have a bunch of what they call the girl workouts. And so it's like Nancy, Karen, Jill, whatever, you name the girl's name, a popular American name, there's going to be a workout for that. And so those are standards <clears throat> among athletes. So you can say, hey, what, what was, what's your Karen time? What's your, and that, they'll ask what – they'll name the girl workout and ask what the time is, and you can tell the time for the workout. I remember asking one time, I said, how come they're named girl? After girls, just girls. And the owner's response was – and this is a nationwide organization. Um, so the owner's response was – well, they call they named them girl girl names because only a woman can cause you that much pain. Ha ha! And so, but that is true for a man. Scary thing, vulnerable thing. Uh, but he goes ahead and he lays down his life for this woman. Uh, in in Ephesians chapter number five, we understand that laying down of Adam's life is not just to happen one time in the garden. Take the rib out. And notice the rib, where the rib comes from. It comes by his side, doesn't come from his head. She's not over him. Doesn't come from his foot. She's not uh, underneath him. Comes from his side. Uh, but he is he is now somebody to lay down his life for, to offer himself up for. Another thing that he has now is he has someone that has helped meet for him. Two are better than one. Now when he's working in his garden, his calling God's calling, uh, he's going to find fulfillment. <clears throat> Understand this. He's going to find fulfillment not in her alone. He's going to find fulfillment in the garden with her as he's fulfilling God's best. Men identify themselves with their garden that God has called them to. Women find fulfillment in their relationships. Uh, and this is why you ask a, a guy, so tell me about yourself. Well, I do this, I do that. You see, if I, you know, if you ask a woman, well, tell me about yourself. Well, I have a husband, I have three kids, and and they're gonna I 
I name their relationships. This is why there's a disparity in income between men and women. A lot of times women, once they have families, they don't feel like accelerating their their occupation. They like to keep it static most of the time, like keep where they're at because they find all the fulfillment that they need inside their relationships. So there is that difference between men and women. So the man was supposed to not leave his woman to go out into the garden. He's supposed to take her along the journey with him. So if a man's called to something, he that's not an excuse to say, see you later, woman. I'm going to be in my garden, you know, see you on the weekend or whatever. He's supposed to take her along the journey with. So now he's got to help me. And then also... Uh, he has got someone to fight for. In chapter 3, verse number 1, we see now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Now, Adam, unfortunately, our forefather, does not do his duty in being a warrior and protecting his wife. Instead, he stands there in paralysis and lets her eat of the fruit, he eats of the fruit. What he was supposed to do is slay the dragon and win the princess. Uh, but he did not do that. You know what What makes uh, fighting and warring fulfilling for Adams of the Adams of this world is the fact that they have somebody back home to fight for. Uh, I love watching war movies, and you know the guys always carry inside their pocket, close to their heart, the picture of the one back home that they left back there. And you think of your favorite war movie, uh, most likely. The hero of that story, he has got the memory of his Eve back home. And one of the reasons why he's going off, leaving his his village, leaving his people, leaving his tribe, and going off to war is because he's got someone back home to fight for. Uh, this is a World War II New Testament. This was issued to my grandfather, Howard G. Young, by his father and mother, Mr. and Mrs. John Young, May the 21st, 1944. My grandfather went off to the Pacific Theater and fought over uh, against the Japanese uh, in in that theater, did not see combat over there, but was there near combat. Um, and on the opposite page, here's Howard's Eve, June. And so it says, if found, return to 28 North Avenue, Webster, New York, to Mrs. June Young. So remember this. Adam had a garden to keep. He was an explorer. He explored the possibilities, and he brought order, and he settled those possibilities. He was a pioneer. What has God called you to? What is your garden? Uh, what's inside of your garden? Uh, you are to uh, establish that, settle that, rule over that, take dominion over the garden which God has given you. Number two, you've got a battle to fight. You have an enemy within, you have an enemy without, that you are to be a strong, mighty, powerful warrior ready to slay the dragon in chapter number three, which will come at some point in your life. You are to be prepared as a warrior of Jesus Christ to face that enemy. And then number three, you have, Adam, you have a woman to win. Remember, you didn't win her just one time. You win her again and day after day, laying down your life for her. Remember, she is your help meet. You don't leave her to go to your garden. You take her in the garden of life alongside of you. And remember this, uh, you that have family and relationships, we all have relationships and family, is that we have someone to fight for. You know, we have a family, we have a church family, we have people around us. We've got some people to give our lives to. So let's stop there. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. And we thank you for Genesis chapter number two. And uh, Lord, Adam wasn't placed in a garden that had self-tilling soil. Uh, He had to turn over that soil. Uh, He's the one who had to keep and maintain 
all the trees there in the garden. He's the one who was to explore that region around and, and bring sense and order out of chaos. And, Lord, he was the one also that was to be the fighter, the soldier, the stand-up against his own inner temptation and the outer enemy that was the dragon, the Satan. And, Lord, we, we thank you that uh, he had a woman to win. And, Lord, help us to remember, especially those of us who are married, our Eve. Lord, help us to lay down our life for her, as it says in Ephesians 5. Lord, help us to remember our help meet that is meet for us to bring along through the garden of life. And then finally, we thank you for those that we have that are worth fighting for. And uh, Lord, we pray that you just bless this study. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless each and every one of you. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you so much for watching our services today. We hope you enjoyed them very much. Uh, we'd appreciate it if you liked and subscribed to this channel. Also, we'd love to hear from you. If you can email us at mylbbc at gmail.com, we're going to send you this book. It's called Done, What Most Religions Do Not Teach You about the Bible. It tells you how you can have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Also, if you'd like to find out more about our church and our church family, you can visit us at lbbc.info. God bless you. Thank you for watching this video. Have a good day.